Hare Krishna, the devotees. Hare Krishna, Hare Dhanvat Pranam. Dhanvat, Dhanvat. Welcome for the Bhakti Shastri class. We'll just start quickly. Om Agyana Timirandasya Yananjana Shalakaya Chakshuram Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Tapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Padamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Namam Vishna Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namini Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharini Nervishesh Shunyavadi Paschata de Shatarini E Krishna Karuna Sindo Dina Bandu Jagatpati Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastati Tapta Kanjana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sate Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpatrupyasha Prapas in Dupya Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namonamaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadar Shiva Sadigar Bhaktarinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna dear devotees so welcome for the 30th session of the uh, Bhakti Shastri class on the Bhagavad Gita and uh, we were at uh, the seventh chapter wherein uh, Krishna is giving the knowledge uh, about himself uh, you can say knowledge of the absolute and uh, I guess we had halted at the uh, 15th sloka or oh, 17th sloka Give me a minute. We had halted at the nineteenth uh, shloka, where uh, the rarity of pure devotee, uh, pure devotee is being spoken, where only kevel bhakta, bahu nama janma namante, gyanavan va prapatyante, vasudeva sarveti sah matma su durlabha, and uh, there it says that if uh, worshipping Krishna uh, makes, you know, uh, Sakam Bhakta successful in this, then what happens to those people who do demigod worship and uh, uh, who are impersonalists? So Krishna in the 20th sloka onwards, he starts speaking about those uh, uh, people who take up to demigod worship and uh, and uh, uh, they want to do demigod worship just to remove their you know distress or fulfill some of their desires or uh, uh, they have some uh, you know ulterior motives also so to fulfill those desires then they do demigod worship. So over here he is saying that, Krishna says that, Kame ste ste hita gyanam prapadyante anya devata tam tam niyama sthayaha prakrutyaniya tasvayaha. Somebody read the translation and purport both. Hare Krishna Mataji, may I? Sure, 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 definitely. Translation provoked by His Divine Grace is Sakirdan Swami Srila Prabhupada, Jai Srila Prabhupada. Translation, those whose intelligence has been stolen by material desire, surrender unto demigods and follow the particular rules and regulations of worship according to their own natures. About Jai Srila Prabhupada. Those who are freed from all material contaminations surrender unto the Supreme Lord and engage in His devotional service. As long as the material contamination is not completely washed off, they are by nature non-devotees. But even though who, has, who have material desire 
and who resort to the Supreme Lord are not so much attracted by external nature because of approaching the right goal, they soon become free from all the material lust. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is recommended that whether one is a pure devotee and is free from all material desire or is full of material desire or desires liberation from material contamination, he should in all cases surrender to Vasudev and worship him as stated in Bhagavatam 2.3.10 Akama Sarva Kamevya Moksha Kama Udhar Dhyar Tirena Bhakti Yogena Yajate Purusham Parama Less intelligent people who have lost their spiritual sense take shelter of demigods for immediate fulfillment of material desire. Generally, such people do not go to Supreme Personality of Godhead because they are in the lower modes of nature, ignorance and patience, and therefore worship various demigods. Following the rules and regulations of worship, they are satisfied. The worshipper of demigod are motivated by small desire and do not know how to reach the supreme goal. But a devotee of supreme lord is not misguided. Because in Vedic literature, there are recommendations for worshipping different gods for different purposes. Example, a deceased man is recommended, uh, recommended to worship the sun. Who, those who are not devotee of Lord think that for certain purpose demigods are better than the Supreme Lord. But a pure devotee knows that the Supreme Lord Krishna is the matter, a master of all. In the Chaitanya Charitamrut Adi 5.142, it is said, Ek Aekle Ishwara Krishna Arasabha Pratya. Only the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna is master and all others are servants. Therefore, a pure devotee never goes to demigods for satisfaction of his material needs. He depends on the Supreme Lord and the pure devotee is satisfied with whatever he gives. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Thank you so much. So see, uh, he is speaking about what about those who worship the demigods. So see, there are certain characteristics also of why people are worshipping the demigods. <coughs> so he is saying over here that Kames Tate Ter Rita Jnana So Kames means because of you know material desires if you see the word to word meaning over here. Hmm. And Rita Jnana Rita means what? Uh, they are uh, you know the intelligence uh, no, that knowledge uh, that has been destroyed or it has been, you know, um, taken away or removed. And then he is saying that prapadyante anya devata. What do they do? Prapadyante means we know. Now the word prapadyante means we know the synonym of that prapadyante in English is surrender. So now what do they do? They surrender to anya devata. They surrender to uh, other uh, demigods or uh, somebody else or some other devatas. And then he's saying tam tam niyamam asthaya. So, uh, so one follows that rules accordingly. Niyam, you know, asthaya. Jis, jinke usper astha hogi. So then they will start following that. And then he's saying that uh, prakritya nityas Svayaha. So, so, if you see <clears throat> uh, the rules and regulations according to one's own prakriti means one's own nature. See, we all have one inherent nature that we are born with, right? So, according to our own uh, nature, we will follow. So, <clears throat> uh, Krishna is explaining that why do some people uh, surrender to him but 
sorry why do uh, some people not surrender to him and they surrender to some other demigods or devatas and shri prabhupada in this purport is explaining in this session section that uh, actually some people say that all gods are one but here if you see krishna is clearly differentiating prapadyante those who surrender to other gods or demigods so uh, there is a very nice categorical difference uh, the two which where krishna is mentioning over here that it is indicating that there are different demigods also and it is not that all of them are one right they are different so when one is understanding this then one understands uh, very clearly that not all paths uh, you know lead to one god or uh, that uh, all paths are not uh, one all gods are not one right there is a supreme lord and then because there is a supreme lord and then there are other devatas also so that is why he is saying that uh, kame sthate ter rit gyana prapadyante anya devata so he is saying anya devata other demigods and uh, if one is following according to one's nature then what is happening here krishna is referring that how you know even if you see in the puranas uh, there are three modes okay the puranas are also divided into three modes and these puranas what they do is they uh, direct people to worship according to the propensities so different people have different propensities so the puranas will direct them to worship according uh, to their propensity uh, their respective propensities or their level of consciousness so if you see uh, the tamasic puranas you know guide people to worship shiva uh, then rajasic people uh, sorry rajasic purana guide uh, people to worship brahma and then the satvik puranas they guide people to worship lord vishnu so the vedic system is created only in such a way uh, that according to that level of the person or people then he can worship uh, a particular demigod or uh, a particular god and then they become slowly slowly they become elevated and uh, they become uh, you know they rise from the uh, lower mode uh, to the higher mode and that's how Uh, this provides them like you know uh, a slow and gradual elevation towards uh, god of consciousness so uh, for uh, so then he's saying that prakriti uh, and nitya swaya so if somebody is addicted to meat eating and drinking then uh, such a person uh, such a person cannot become religious so such a person if he cannot become religious then he cannot even reach to that highest level but uh, that does not mean that uh, you know uh, he cannot become religious at all uh, if he starts practicing seriously uh, spiritual life then uh, he will be able to you know eventually upgrade himself and he will be able to follow all the rules and regulations but if he is practicing for the sake of getting liberation then you know it's very difficult for a for such a person to uh, get liberation unless if he gives up many other things like you know, if he does not give up uh, for example somebody wants liberation but he is still drinking liquor somebody wants liberation but still is eating meat then for such people you know liberation becomes very difficult but uh, and of course if somebody is not ready to only give up something for a higher cause okay then for such people it is very difficult so uh, he is saying over here that uh, in kaliyuga 
people are more in the uh, lower modes and that is why because they are in the lower modes and when they start from in this tamasic mode of worship and like uh, uh, tamoguna and all and then gradually they can elevate but somebody might ask that how can they practice devotional service which is meant only for uh, those who are in the mode of goodness so krishna over here is telling that uh, um, is talking about this normal system that if pure devotees will intervene in the life of a person and if uh, the devotional force comes in the life of a person then even a normal person can be uh, uplifted or he can be transcended so instead of taking the gradual staircase where you know uh, uh, he, he will climb step by step, step by step. So one can take a very, very, you know, a swift elevator and move forward. Uh, and uh, in both the processes where, you know, you have a staircase and then you have a swift elevator. Okay, both are moving forward. But uh, the difference between the two is whether one is getting the access to the mercy of Krishna which is uh, coming through a pure devotee. Whether one uh, accepts the mercy and if he, uh, uh, so if he's accepting, then he's fortunate enough uh, to accept that mercy and uh, one can move very fast forward in Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada, if you see, uh, very compassionately, he has uh, elevated us uh, uh, who were in actually Tamoguna. At least if I am talking about myself, I was in completely Tamoguna. No, no awareness about the body, soul and all. And even if you see in the West also, the hippies used to do all anti-spiritual activities. They are also, you know, elevated by the mercy of a pure devotee. But normally, we have to understand that Bhakti is not always easily accessible. Even in the Vedic, uh, you know, cultural, Bhakti is not always available. Bhakti is always very rare, durlab. So when Bhakti is not available for people uh, 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 who are doing all, you know, irreligious activities and they are living all uh, materialistic and, you know, godless uh, life, so, the Vedic culture gives a facility by which they can gradually elevate and uh, that is actually the demigod worship system which is available to them. So, the demigod worship system is an indirect worship, uh, you know, uh, to the Supreme Lord. So, even the Bhagavatam, it recommends pure devotion service. But uh, here, Srila Prabhupada has quoted uh, Akama Sarva Kamava Moksha Kamudharadi Tivrena Bhakti Yogena Yajeta Purusham Param. And uh, why has Prabhupada uh, uh, given this quote saying that even whatever desire one has, Akama Sarva Kamava. Whatever desire you may have, you may have moksha kam, you may have dardi, you know, still one will become elevated and liberated. If one just worships whom? Yajeta Purusham Param. If one is worshiping the Supreme Lord. And how can one worship the Supreme Lord? Then he is saying that Tivrena Bhakti Yogena. Tivrata se. With very intense. Uh, with great intensity, one worships the uh, Supreme Lord. So, uh, uh, so Bhakti, and that is how, you know, when he worships, then uh, he can become liberated. And that is actually said away. So, he's saying that, Akama Sarva Kamava, Moksha Kama Udharadi. Then, then, because when you say, A Kama, you know, when you say Kama means, you know, some 
you know material desire but when you say a kama it is referring to one who has no material desire sarva kamo va and sarva kamo va va means all kinds of you know material desires that are there he does not have and then he does not have even desire for what moksha kama also he does not have desire for liberation also so this Mm, is, uh, so this is the Bhagavatam's recommendation. Bhagavatam always recommends that ultimately whatever one's level is, let that person worship the Supreme Lord and uh, those who cannot understand this particular principle, then they may worship the other demigods and they will also slowly and gradually become elevated uh, in their consciousness. So, Prabhupada is referring, uh, you know, even uh, again he's saying, uh, Ekala Ishwar Krishna Ara uh, Sava He's saying that only the Supreme Personal God is the master and all others are the servants. So, all the other demigods are also what? They are the servants of Krishna because they are subordinate to Krishna. So, having said this, those who worship Krishna with, you know, material desires, you know, those who worship Krishna with material desires, they are called Sakama Bhaktas. So, they get liberation by the power of devotion to Krishna. But those who are worshipping uh, the Devatas, you know, desiring some, uh, you know, quick, quick uh, uh, happiness, they will continue to take birth and uh, uh, because they are bereft of the shelter of uh, Krishna. So, this is what is being said in the next sloka. He is saying that Yo, yo, yam, yam, tanum, bhakta shraddhaya chitum ichhati tasya, sorry, Tasya tasya chalam shraddham tameva vidhami aham. Somebody read the translation and purport both. Can you Mataji Hare Krishna? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Purport. I am in everyone's heart as the super soul. As soon as one desires to worship some demigod, I make him faith study so that he can. Devote himself to that particular deity. Perfect. God has given independence to everyone. Therefore, if a person desires to have material enjoyment and wants very sincerely to have such facilities from the material demigods, the Supreme Lord, as super soul in everyone's heart, understands and gives facilities to such persons as the Supreme Father for all the living entities. He does not interfere with their independence, but gives all facilities so that they can fulfill their material desires. Some may ask why the allow all powerful God gives facilities to the living entities for enjoying this material world and so lets them fall into the trap of the illusory energy. The answer is that if the Supreme Lord as the Super Soul does not give such facilities, then there is no meaning to independence. Therefore, he gives everyone full independence, whatever one likes, but his ultimate instruction we find in the Bhagavad Gita, one should give up all other engagements and fully surrender unto him. That will make man happy. Both the living entity and the demigods are subordinate to the will of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, the living entity cannot worship the demigod by his own desire nor can the demigod bestow any benediction without the supreme will. As it is said, not a blade of grass moves without the will of the supreme personality of the Godhead. Generally, persons who are distressed in the material world go to the demigods as they are advised in the Vedic literature. A person wanting some particular thing may worship such and such a demigod. For example, a deceased person is recommended to worship the sun god. A person wanting education may worship the goddess of the learning Saraswati. And a person wanting a beautiful wife may worship the goddess Uma, the wife of Lord Shiva. In this way, there are recommendations in the Shastra, Vedic scriptures, 
for different modes of worship of different demigods. And because a particular living entity wants to enjoy a particular material facility, the Lord, Lord inspires him with a strong desire to achieve the, that benediction from that particular demigod. And so he successfully received the benediction. The particular mode of the devotional attitude of the living entity toward a particular type of demigod is also arranged by the Supreme Lord. The demigods cannot infuse the living entities with such an affinity. But because he is the Supreme Lord or the Super Soul who is present in the hearts of all the living entities, Krishna gives impetus to man to worship certain demigods. The demigods are actually different parts of the universal body of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, they have no independence. In the Vedic literature, it is stated, the Supreme Personality of Godhead as Super Soul is also present within the herd of the demigod. Therefore, he arranges through the demigod to fulfill the desire of the living entity. But both the demigod and the living entity are dependent on the supreme will. They are not independent. Thank you, Mataji. Yeah. Thank you, Dhruvji. Thank you so much. So over here he is saying that yo yo yam yam tanum bhakta. So I think Brajrani Mataji has some question. Yes, Mataji. Mataji, I'm not sure we'll want to take it now, but it's a personal question. 25 years ago, I didn't know God. I didn't believe in any demigod. I was facing some challenges. So I would, go, while going to office, just enter a temple and sit there for 10, 15 minutes, talk to just a generic God. And then 25 years later, I went to pick up my kids from the temple and someone reached out to me and I got into Krishna consciousness. So here it says that demigods, Krishna gives you demigods because you aspire for something specific. I, the example I gave, there was no aspiration for any specific demigod. And in the second time, there was no aspiration for Krishna either. But it all happened, happened chance. How does one explain that? See, Madhaji, the very fact that you did not have any aspiration, no, then Krishna gave you the highest. Right? When you went to a demigod, you just did not go with some icha. You just maybe sat over there for a few minutes and, you know, you took you took that positivity positivity of that atmosphere and you came back. That's it. There was no other ulterior motive or there was no other desire also. There was no even desire for liberation. So it was like a plain thing that you just went and you came. Now, 25 years later, Krishna is thinking that how long will she, you know, just remain neutral. So she's neither this side, neither this side. So let me give her the highest. And somewhere deep down also uh, in the hearts of people, uh, they actually are hankering for the highest. Like say for example, okay, uh, between a mobile phone, if you know that that small, you know, that button wala is not going to actually suffice my, you know, problem. Or it's not going to be efficient enough for me in this modern age, will we go and buy that button wala mobile now? But we will always aim for the highest, right? So when you know, okay, the Apple is offering us something, you know, more efficient and better, then a person will always strive for, uh, you know, the highest, the best, okay, in the month. So even in devotional life, people will always go in for the highest. People will not go in for which is temporary and which is not going to give happiness to them in the uh, 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 for a short time. Everybody wants happiness uh, permanently. They don't want happiness uh, for a few minutes. Or a few years. They want permanent happiness. So in your case, Mataji, what has happened is Krishna gave you the best. And because uh, somewhere deep down the line, you did not have those uh, 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 desires. So Krishna has given you the best. And uh, definitely you're very fortunate enough that Krishna has given you himself in the form of uh, the association of devotees and Guru himself. 
Thank you so much, Maharaji. Hare Krishna. Yeah, Hare Krishna. So he's saying that yo yo yam yam tanun bhakta. Whatever, okay, tanum means whatever uh, form one feels attracted to, one desires to, you know, like he says, ichhati. Ichhati means desire. No. Architu ichhati, he is saying. Architum ichhati. So, architu is like, you know, worship. If you see over here the word to word translation, And then he is saying that uh, Ichhati, you know, is desire normally when we, you know, worship there has to have some faith or some uh, Shraddha. So he is saying that this Shraddha, this uh, Architum and this Ichhati. So one desire to worship with Shraddha. And then he is saying that Tasyatyasya. Uh, Achalam and Shraddham. So he makes this Shraddha uh, Achala. Achala means very firm and steady and uh, or unshakable also you can say. He makes this uh, you know faith uh, very very unshakable and then he is saying Tam Eva Vidhami Aham so, I give that Vidhami. What Vidhami is there? I give them that strong faith or, or unshakable faith. Achal Shraddha. Achalam Shraddha. Achalam means, you know, which cannot be moved. That Shraddha who is giving, Krishna himself is only giving. So, if you see that uh, very significantly Krishna is explaining that he... He is so kind that he does not reject demigod worship directly. Nor he rejects the people who are demigod worshippers. You know, sometimes you know, in the material world also, you will say, hey, why don't you worship me? Why are you going and worshipping somebody else? But a uh, very, uh, you know, broad-minded Krishna is that he does not mind or he does not reject uh, demigod worship. He is not concerned with his own glorification. He is concerned with the, the other's elevation and, uh, you know, our elevation also, of course. Uh, normally speaking, you know, our material, uh, in the material world also, uh, our material boss, he, he wants to know everyone uh, that I am the boss. And if Somebody else comes, you know, uh, in his, uh, you know, path. Like, uh, for example, the CEO and the assistant manager. And someone comes to the office and he starts praising the assistant manager. Uh, uh, as if, you know, uh, the assistant manager is the CEO only. So, the real CEO will become very angry on both of them that why are they praising this assistant manager? And uh, he will even scold uh, the assistant manager also that why are we accepting that praise? But see, Krishna is not like that. Uh, Krishna is happy when devotees glorify him. But he also understands that uh, the glorification is based on devotion. And that glorification is not flattery. That uh, glorification is not centered on the uh, ego. The glorification is actually, if you see, it's a reciprocation of love between two people. So if we have, uh, so uh, if we love someone, we appreciate that person. And naturally, when we you know love, we will glorify that person also. So like that, when we understand that. Uh, when we understand, then we move forward uh, in our spiritual lives also and we progress spiritually also. We, we move forward in understanding that how compassion Krishna, compassionate Krishna is. And sometimes 
uh, you know, devotees may be doubting that, okay, if Krishna is the supreme, then why Vedas talk about other devatas, other demigods, uh, and sometimes the other demigods are also mentioned as supreme. Like some place, the Lord Shiva is mentioned as the supreme. Then why are they saying like that? So this shows that Krishna has a very, very large heart. Bada ridhe ke he Prabhu. He's so large that he's not concerned whether everyone recognizes his position or not. Whether people glorify him or not. If they understand him or not. And if they understand that, then uh, do, uh, do that. It is great because that is the way uh, for ultimate liberation, right? That is the way for, you know, an ultimate happiness that people want. And uh, when you glorify Krishna, then you have that supreme fulfillment. But if they are not ready only to do that, at least Krishna is saying that let them elevate from a lower mode to a higher mode. And therefore, what Krishna does is that he gives the demigods the power. He gives the demigods, uh, the demigod worshipper, that little faith. So he is saying over here that uh, tasya tasya uh, uh, shraddhanam. He is saying that I make dyar shraddha achala. So okay, you wanted to worship that the particular uh, demigod. Uh, okay, I will give you that faith for that particular demigod. And then what will happen slowly, slowly, then by worshipping that devta, respecting him, uh, he will get elevated. And he will get that achal faith, unshakable faith, you know. And uh, basically what Krishna is doing over here is that he is facilitating uh, that elevation. Uh, tam eva vidhami aham. Uh, and that uh, facilitation is being done by Krishna. Like imagine, so merciful that uh, actually that person has to reach, you know, to a destination. But this person does not know that he has to reach the final goal is this. But Krishna is facilitating him with that final goal, right? So that is why even if you see, we as teachers, we call ourselves as facilitating only. We don't say that, oh, we are responsible for his going back home, back to Godhead. No, we are just mentors over here. We are just facilitators over here. Just facilitating, uh, you know, every devotee over here to get attracted to Krishna. And uh, uh, Krishna is present uh, as the super soul in every person's heart. Okay, and he says that, okay, you want to worship this particular devta, you know, I'll give you that faith. And that way, uh, we will understand that Krishna is such a broad-minded person and uh, uh, a devotee appreciates this. Of course, the, the devotees doesn't get involved in demigod worship, but we as devotees, we appreciate his, uh, you know, broad-mindedness or a bigger, bigger heart. We appreciate that. So when we understand Krishna's glory, we focus more on Krishna's glory exclusively, singularly. And we appreciate the broad heart of Krishna also. He kitna bada ridhe hai. So when someone sees, you know, uh, you know, if you see the translation, I am seated in everyone's heart as a super soul. Uh, it, uh, he may ask, you know, that uh, there is no mention about the super soul. There is no mention about Paramatma. There is no Ridhaya. Then uh, where is Krishna talking about, uh, you know, anything like this? So Prabhupada, you know, often... Uh, um, Integrates the translation and the purport to, uh, you know, 
इल्यूम इल्यूम मीन यू नो उस पर फोकस डालने के लिए द ट्रांसलेशन बेटर ऑल्सो सो समटाइम्स वेन ही वॉन्ट्स टू एक्सप्लेन सर्टन पॉइंट टू अस सो ऑन सो दो पॉइंट प्रॉपर डज सच थिंग दैट आर कंसेप्शन विल बिकम मोर क्लियर एंड वी डू नॉट गेट इन टू एनी यू नो अननेसेसरी मिस अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड दैट्स वाई यू नो तस्य तस्य अचलम शब्दम सो somebody might ask that where is this faith ultimately so see faith is a matter of art okay if you do not have faith you will not pour in your heart right the child has faith on the mother that is why he is completely relaxed in the lap of the mother and krishna is present in the heart so shila prabhupada is pointing that krishna gives a faith depending on our desire whatever kind of faith we want krishna will give that kind of faith and so he uses faith in himself when we choose to you know develop faith in him uh, you know that's why krishna is saying i give give that faith to him and after that krishna will say that because if you see in the in prabhupada corporate also is saying that someone may ask uh, why all the powerful god or uh, the supreme lord krishna uh, giving facility uh, facility to the living entities for enjoying this material world and let them to you know fall into this trap of maya or illusionary energy right he is saying over here this so the answer to that is that if the supreme lord as a super soul does not give such facilities then there is no meaning of such independence so uh, one such facility which the lord is giving to exercise independence is actually the demigod worship so through uh, this krishna allows the living entity to turn towards him gradually by slowly slowly moving him forward so see so for suppose they are you know worshiping tamo uh, worshiping in tamogun they will rise from tamogun to rajogun at least and then to sattva guna also so prabhupad explains you know both the demigod and the living entity they both are dependent on whose will they dependent on the supreme will so your krishna talked about how living entities faith will be enhanced by demigod worship and then now in the next he will talk about that how even the demigods are also empowered by krishna right so let's see the next shloka sa tasya shraddhaya yukta तस्याधनम इतेल लभते च तत कामान मायेव विहितान हितान समझ लीजिए ट्रांसलेशन एंड पर्पस बोथ हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा माता जी और ये या यू कैन रीड माता जी वन सेकंड I was just thinking there was a dead silence. I think everybody is there, or they're sleeping. <laughs> um, uh, translation and purport by Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Endowed with such a faith, he endeavors to worship a particular demigod and obtains his desires. But in actuality, these benefits are bestowed to me alone. Purport: The demigods cannot award benedictions to their devotees without the permission of the supreme lord. the living entity may forget that everything is the property of the supreme lord but the demigods do not forget so the worship of demigods and achievement of desired results are due not to the demigods but to the supreme personality of godhead by arrangement the less <coughs> the <coughs> sir the less intelligent living entity does not know this and therefore he foolishly goes to the demigods for some benefit but the pure devotee when in need of something praise only to the supreme lord 
asking for material benefit, however, is not a sign of pure devotee. A living entity goes to the demigods usually because he is mad to fulfill his lust. This happens when something undue is desired by the living entity and the Lord himself does not fulfill the desire. In the Chaitanya Charitamrit, it is said that one who worships the Supreme Lord and at the same time desires material enjoyment is contra contradictory to in his desires. Devotional service to the Supreme Lord and the worship of a demigod cannot be on the same platform because worship of a demigod is material and devotional service to the Supreme Lord is completely spiritual. For the living entity who desires to return to Godhead, material desires are impediments. A pure devotee of the Lord is therefore not awarded the material benefits desired by the living entity, uh, by the less intelligent living entities, who therefore prefer to worship demigods of the material world rather than engage in the devotional service of the Supreme Lord. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Thank you, Madhavi. Thank you so much. So he is saying that Sahataya Shraddhaya Yuktas. He is saying he is, uh, you know, um, equipped with that particular faith. Tasya Aradhanam Ihate. You know, that person. Uh, uh, Aradhanam is the same as Architam in, in the previous shloka. And that person also worships Ihate. He also aspires or endeavors. So, equipped with that particular faith, what he is doing is, he is uh, worshipping. Okay. And then he gets that result. So, Labate cha tataha kaman. So he's saying that uh, the person gets the desire. Kaman means, you know, the desire. And, uh, uh, you know, even in the 20th shloka, it's in a kama ste rita jnana. So because of this kam, one is doing this. And over here, you know, labate kaman, he's saying that one gets that desire. So Krishna is saying that, uh, you know, uh, Actually, it is by my mercy only what is happening. He is getting that. So, Krishna is telling here that it is him only who is actually the giver of the result. So, the devatas also, the demigods also, they also don't have that independent power to give results. The devatas power are there, but uh, their power ultimately is coming from Krishna only. You know, the Supreme Lord only. And that is why if uh, there is a, you know, you can say uh, confrontation between the Devatas and the Supreme, then the Devata always uh, uh, always pays and they always fail. Because they can't confront and conquer. If you see in the, you know, in the fight between the, uh, uh, fight between the, the demigods and the Supreme Lord, who is always actually, you know, overpowering the Supreme Lord will always overpower the demigods. Why? Because uh, they can see, and even in the Bra Bhagavatam, if you see, okay, uh, whenever Brahma Ji, Shivji and other Devdas, they contest, you know, with Krishna, they are always defeated. Even Indra, he tried to, you know, contest with uh, uh, Krishna, Govardhan Hill first time. He was defeated. So, uh, the demigods are also coming from Krishna only. Mai evam vihitam. So, whatever blessing anybody is giving, that blessing is coming from Lord Krishna only. So, even if the demigods are giving some blessing, it is coming from Lord Krishna only and that is why if you see in the purport over here, Prabhupada is saying that the living entity who desires to return to Godhead, you know, material desires are what? They are uh, big impediments. Right? Why? Because uh, we don't want any other desire other than to serve Krishna. Right? 
so a devotee is not caught in you know some de desires uh, you know he is focusing only on uh, glorifying krishna and he wants to return back home back to godhead so now having said that uh, because the lord has given the independence to everybody and uh, uh, he does not interfere with that independence and uh, as a super soul in everyone's heart he has only two functions upadekshyanti and uh, uh, he is the sanctioner and he is the seer okay i forget that sanskrit word right now i'm not remembering that so the and he understands also the desire and because he understands those desires he is facilitating and directing them to that particular demigod for fulfilling their desires so this is what is said over here that because the demigods are powerful uh, and their power is coming from krishna they cannot independently bestow uh, any boons without krishna's sanction so everything has to be sanctioned krishna ki signature chahiye for example one file is there and that file has to be sanctioned then without uh, you know the main boss uh, you know the manager cannot do anything right so then in the next shloka he says that what is the result of demigod worship he says that antavattu phalam tesham तद्भवन्ति अल्पमेदसाम देवान देव यजो यांति मदभक्ता यांति माम अपी समरी रीड द ट्रांसलेशन कैन आई रीड माता जी यस 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 प्रभु जी श्योर ट्रांसलेशन एंड परपट बाय श्री लपाद प्रभु पार्क जय श्री ल प्रभु पार्क ट्रांसलेशन मेन ऑफ स्मॉल इंटेलिजेंस वर्शिप द डेमी गॉड्स एंड देयर फ्रूट्स आर लिमिटेड एंड टेंपरेरी those who worship the demi gods go to the planets of the demi gods but my devotees ultimately reach my supreme planet that part some commentators on the bhagavad gita say that one who worships a demi god can reach the supreme lord but here it is clearly stated that the worshippers of demi god go to the different planetary systems where various demi gods are situated just as a worshipper of the sun achieves the sun or a worshipper of the demigod of the moon achieves the moon similarly if born if one if, if anyone wants to worship a demigod like indra he can attain that particular god's planet it is not that everyone regardless of whatever demigod is worshiped will reach the supreme personality of god that is denied here but it is clearly stated that the worshippers of demigods go to the different planets in the material world but the devotees of the supreme lord goes directly to the supreme planet of the personality of god and here the point may be raised that if the demigods are different parts of the body of the supreme lord then the same end should be achieved by worshipping them however worshippers of the demigods are less intelligent because they do not know to what part of the body food must be supplied some of them are so foolish that they claim that they are many parts and many ways to supply food this isn't very sanguine can anyone supply food to the body through the ears or eyes they do not know that these demigods are different parts of the universal body of the supreme lord and in their ignorance they believe that each and every is there each and every demigod is each and every demigod is a separate god and a competitor of the supreme lord not only are the demigods parts of the supreme lord but the ordinary living entities are also in the shrimad bhagavatam it is stated that brahmanas are the head of the supreme lord the kshatriyas are his arms the vaishyas are his waist the shudras are his legs and all serve all serve different functions regardless of the situation if one knows that both the demigods and he himself are part and parcel of the supreme lord his knowledge is perfect but if he does not understand this he achieves different planets where the demigods reside this is not the same destination the devotee reaches 
the results achieved by the demigods benedictions are perishable because within this material world the planets the demigods and their worshippers are all perishable therefore it is clearly stated in this verse that all results achieved by worshipping demigods are perishable and therefore such worship is performed by the less intelligent living entity because the pure devotee engaged in krishna consciousness in devotional service of the supreme lord achieves eternal bliss existence that is full of knowledge his achievements and those of the common worshipper of the demigods are different the supreme lord is unlimited his favor is unlimited his mercy is unlimited therefore the mercy of the supreme lord upon his pure devotees is unlimited thank you much thank you bro thank you so much so he is saying that uh, antavattu phalam tesham so uh, that phal phal of fruit that one gets by worshiping the demigods are antavatt antavatt means temporary yeah. and tad bhavanti alpa medasam so who aspires for this actually is actually alpa medasam people people of less intelligent or small intelligence and uh, uh, devan dev yagna yanti and those who worship the devatas go to you know the devatas na devaloka but my devotees mad bhakta yanti mam api those who worship me come back to me that is what krishna is saying over here those who worship the demigods they go to their planet demigod planets but those who worship me they will come to me only and this is what uh, krishna is telling over here so uh krishna is explaining um uh, oh a difference in that different kinds of worship different levels of worship when he is saying that antavat tu phalam tesham because the demigods are temporary uh, the abodes are also temporary and the worshipers they themselves are also temporary so as a soul they are eternal but the attainment Uh, which they get as long as you know they are existing is in the material world is actually temporary whatever benedictions they will get there that is also temporary so even if you see our bodily existence is also temporary so de the demigod worshipers when they are elevated uh, what is the ultimate fruit they can get is the ultimate fruit they can get is the mercy of the supreme lord and somehow they get elevated from demigod worship to the worship of the supreme lord that is the ultimate blessing they get they can get and instead of sakam bhaktas then they can become nishkam bhaktas in the worship of the supreme lord otherwise at the material level the benefit they uh, can get is that they you know may move from one materialist consciousness Uh, to another pious materialistic consciousness as such and uh, they may go to a demigod abode also uh, to live with that particular demigod but uh, that demigod planet is also not permanent so the demigods abode which are temporary you know they cannot uh, they cannot uh, you know give them the final destination whenever there is annihilation all the fourteen planetary systems are you know uh, annihilated so uh, you know they are living you know temporarily and uh, uh, because uh, people are performing today this demigod worship they don't even know that what is proper scriptural uh, you know rules and regulations and they don't do that demigod worship also with proper Uh, rules and regulations so that is why saying that uh, uh, tam tam niyam uh, asthayami uh, there has to be niyam hai na one has to have asthay one has to uh, follow those niyams fully all the rules and regulations 
uh, very very with shraddha or with faithfully so even the demigod worship has to be done with rules and regulations whimsically you cannot do demigod worship ki chalo ek agarbatti laga li ek phool laga liya thodi aarti kar li ho gaya hamara puja no but uh, uh, it has to be done with rules and regulations so now the rules and regulations for demigod worship may be very different from you know the rules and regulations uh, uh, for krishna's worship or even among the demigods also there are uh, rules and uh, only when one follows those rules then he can get elevated so uh, but if you see in india today uh, we have demigod worship in india uh, and we may have a worship of lord ganesha also and uh, you know or uh, you know mother durga navratra time also but what is happening over there uh, ganesh uh, you know when ganesh ji is installed in that pandal okay people are playing movie songs and many people uh, don't find it very objectionable also uh, in such a thing that uh, that uh, okay uh, this religious practice is been practiced as one kind of entertainment and uh, people are going to lord ganesha only for entertainment and hearing some you know movie song uh, movie song and also for uh, 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 when you say entertainment only because see uh, if you see you know that um, um, what is the problem in bringing this two forms of entertainment together so when you bring in there is a complete misunderstanding so when i said demigod worship uh, should be also done for the demi uh, glorification of our demigod only you glorify lord ganesha that how fantastically he's written the mahabharat okay how fantastically he accumulated you know mother parvati right so those values can be you know instilled and uh, uh with that demigod worship then one should worship the supreme but uh if we are worshiping the demigod then we should glorify that demigod in the worship and the best way to glorify that demigod is to glorify uh that demigod as a devotee of the supreme lord that oh you know lord ganesha how wonderfully he became an instrument in propagating the bhagavad gita which is personally spoken by the supreme lord and uh, uh, if you, even if you see in shiv ashtakam okay uh, uh, their lord shiv shiva is glorified as a devotee of the supreme lord so the shiv ashtakam na is written by lord chaitanya mahaprabhu where lord shiva is glorified as a devotee of the supreme lord but if one does does not do that kind of glorification at least he should worship the demigod and glorify him uh, as the uh, power of demigod but today you know even people don't do that the demigod's image will be there but actually one may be singing some very dirty you know uh, sarcastic movie songs and which are full of uh, you know sex and everything and uh, uh, you know in the morning and evening time there will be little little aarti of little little songs sukha karta dukho harta and all that and uh, mm, and and they may they might just do it as a you know obligation ritual of you know offering that particular aarti and then there are songs even sung by you know uh, very professional singers who who is not singing that song out of devotion but for a desire for some profit or fame so this kind of demigod worship now will not lead to much of spiritual advancement actually by the worship of demigods even if the worship is done properly the advancement will happen gradually and that is why krishna has said that if someone worships him for some material motive from there 
you know to full surrender will take him many many lifetimes uh because he's worshiping is with some you know material motive but uh you know why do we want to take the longer route so uh, we should encourage this as a devotee when uh, you know we get that forum we should not hurt people's feelings but uh, when they do demigod worship but we can always guide these people that uh, you know uh, uh, why because people are not informed only they are uninformed people that uh, they do not know that uh, something is wrong over here and uh, we can uh, you know correct that and of course we have to give them a correction in a very gentle way uh, and gravely also explain them uh, that how this demigod worship actually should be to glorify krishna only that how this demigod is an instrument in the hands of krishna and he himself also has assisted krishna in so many pastimes of uh, of of the supreme lord like for example lord shiva in uh, when the samudra manthan happened the churning of the ocean happened lord lord Sh nobody came forward only lord shiva came forward so if somebody is a shiva lover then uh, let him appreciate that yes lord shiva has been an active participant in the mission of the lord and many times many demigods uh, are there they actively participate in the mission of the lord so uh, uh krishna is telling over here that it is not that all of this lead to the same result if someone is worshiping a demigod it is not that that by worshiping demigod people will go back to krishna no it is very very clearly they are saying over here that devan deva yajo yanti those who are worshiping the devatas they will go back to the devatas and those who are worshiping me mad bhakta yanti mam api those who are worshiping will will come back to me uh, and they will attain uh, me and because uh, krishna is saying that attaining me is you know that eternal attainment attaining uh, 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 if somebody is actually attaining krishna then he is in his permanent position he is in his original constitutional position situated with krishna but those who are going to demigods they are attaining the devatas or the demigods is actually temporary and that is why uh these two cannot be equated that if oh acha ultimately i am worshiping a demigod and i will uh, will go to you know krishna only uh, because uh, the power is coming from krishna only and uh, uh, you know i am appreciating this demigod and all no that cannot be equated that is why krishna is saying that those who are equating these two things that all path will lead to one road only they are alpamedasam uh those who, they are very less in, and those who are uh, and this alpa vedasam also na uh, cannot be contrasted uh, uh, with uh, you know any person who is you know gyanavana when is in a gyanavana va prapadyante uh, hmm yeah uh, so uh, then uh krishna is saying that uh, uh only the gyanavan they surrender to me but krishna is also saying that kames tate kame 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 ste tater rit gyanam and dhyan knowledge is actually stolen away by this materialism so someone can say that yes knowledge is stolen away but they at least start worshiping the devatas they did not get into you know sinful activities for fulfilling their material desires so yes uh, that is also definitely good but they have some medasa some some medasa but uh, they are medasa is alp choti buddhi ke hai it is not very great because they are not aspiring for something which is permanent which is eternal they are aspiring something which is actually very temporary only devan devo yagno yanti and uh, 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 you know when they saying that worshiping the devatas then uh, the devatas 
uh, worshipping demigod worship is less intelligent. That is what Krishna is saying. And for human being who is a capable, see, one thing is that your capacity is, you know, uh, you are uh, capable enough of uh, lifting up fifty kg, but you lift up only five kg. So, uh, human beings uh, who is capable of attaining an eternal result is seeking something very temporary. He is settling for something less. You know, uh, uh, when one can actually do something more greater and he can choose to settle for something more greater, he is settling for something very small. Uh, like, uh, you know, an uh, for example, an IIT student. And uh, while in IIT, one does not think that how uh, can he have a very bright career. But uh, think about where he can get best food to eat and, you know, best hostel and best mess and everything and all like, you know, as such. So, uh, or he's searching where I can, you know, get... Good friendship to his time. So, if this goal is only to eat, na, he wants to only eat and, you know, uh, uh, go away. So, then will he be able to uh, pass out an IIT? His goal is to only eat and, you know, move around with this. So, he does not have a goal to become IIT. So, see, one can find food anywhere and everywhere. And we, of course, all need food to eat. But eating is important, but eating is not all important. So, eating is just one part of life. And again, the purpose is of being an IITN, right? Uh, being an IITN and, you know, to study is the main aim. And, uh, and uh, getting a good career. So, similarly... You know, even in our life, if you see, our life also has a material side. And the material side importance is not to be rejected entirely or, you know, neglect our material life. But we have to understand that this material side of life is not all important. If you see the animals also, animals also taking care of the material side, eating, sleeping, making, and defending, right? So, we as human beings, we have to rise to a higher level of understanding. We have to rise uh, to the uh, spiritual level of understanding and that should be our primary focus. And when we understand that we have a, you know, you know we have a, you know, prime focus, then we will get an eternal result. But as long as we will focus on the material side, we will only get temporary result. We will not get permanent result. And that is why Krishna is saying Alpha Medasam. Because they are not focusing on the permanent side. They are focusing only on the temporary side. And uh, the, the, we are, what is the result? He is saying that only. That... Uh, um, the result will be that they will go to the Devata's planet, the demigod planet as such. So, see, there are many diverse destinations also if you see. Okay. Uh, and people say that, okay, all destinations are, uh, you know, uh, same and, you know, everything, uh, you know, the result is the same. But one cannot attain the same destination by worshipping anyone. It is exactly like, you know, uh, I take a wire or I take a plug and I plug it into any socket thinking that okay I will get uh, you know electricity in my house. If my plug is not plugged into the main power house where from, from the main power house where the electricity is coming from I will not get it. I cannot plug in the uh, plug in that socket or the wire to any of the pole there are many poles on the road and I say, okay, I will plug in that wire, you know, on this pole and I will get electricity. No, not that way, right? So, uh, 
the position of demigods are also temporary. So how can the results of their worship be permanent? For example, post position is temporary. Hai. After annihilation, you know, on the on the uh, on the seat of Indra, some other person is coming and sitting. Indra is just a post. Lord Shiva is just a post. Somebody else will come and sit on that particular post. So, um, uh, 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 that is why it is said that the the devotees of the demigods are less intelligent. Because the Supreme Lord is eternal and therefore the results of bhakti, mad bhakta, right? Their results are uh, eternal or their results are permanent. So, if you see the demigods, they are the limbs of Krishna. Worshipping them would actually yield the same result as worshipping Krishna directly. But uh, it is not often so because the less intelligent uh, people of demigod worshipping, they do not see only a relationship between the demigods and Krishna. And they worship them as independent lord, thinking that, oh, yehi sab param hai. You know, these are only all in all and this only person has the power to fulfill my material desires. But uh, those who are worshipping the demigod with the understanding that they are the limbs of the supreme lord body, then they will obtain, you know, eternal results. That doesn't mean that we start worshipping, uh, you know, the demigods. It means that we understand that ultimately the power of the demigod is coming from Krishna. So there's a story, if you all know, you all must have heard many times the story that um, uh, uh, there was uh, there was a person uh, who uh, who came uh, the king, you know, the king had uh, the king had uh, you know given one uh, goshna or uh, what do you say for goshna in English announcement. There was an announcement oh. that uh, anyone, anyone in the kingdom uh, who does uh, this particular job will be given, you know, a prize or a medal or a gift or something, you know. So, uh, this devotee, this person comes and he executes it and he gets a reward. But uh, he thinks that, oh, this king is only supreme, you know. But one day he sees the king bowing down to somebody in the temple. So he, th he thinks that, oh, the king is also bowing down to somebody, which means what? That there is somebody greater than this king also. So the king is bowing down to whom? The king is bowing down to Lord Vishnu in the Vishnu temple. So uh, that is why uh, if you see that demigods have a very little limited power and that little limited power is also coming from Krishna only. And that is why we should be very much staunch enough to worship only the Supreme Personality of Godhead, glorify Him only. And with other demigods, how will we behave? We will behave vancha kalpatru bhesha kripa sindhu bhevacha patitanam pavanepi vajshivedam. Why? Because puja or bhakti mein fark hai. Jab hum kehte hai puja, right? So, uh, we just worship that person. We don't have too much faith in that person. But when you say bhakti, no? Bhakti means I have complete faith in the Supreme Lord. I have, I am ready to even be sold out to the Supreme Lord. Bale na, main bik gaya hu. I am sold out to the Supreme Lord. And that is called actually Bhakti that the devotee does not know anybody other than Krishna. And that is actually a true devotee of Krishna. So having said this, Krishna will also speak about uh, you know the impersonalist. Those who are uh, uh, worshipping, those impersonalists who think that uh, 
there is an uh, there is an absolute truth or an ultimate truth but that absolute truth or the uh, uh, the uh, the the, that absolute truth is impersonal. He does not have any form. He does not have any attributes. And you know, that form is also very temporary. So this is what he is saying in this 24th slok. He is saying that avyaktam vyaktim apanam manyate mam abuddhaya param bhavam agyanto ma mama vyayam anuttamam Somebody read the translation and purport both. Uh, Mataji, can I? Yes, yes, yes. Definitely. Uh, Hare Krishna. Unintelligent men who do not know me perfectly think that I, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna was impersonal before and have now assumed this personality. Due to their small knowledge, they do not know my higher nature, which is imperishable and supreme. Purport. Those who are worshippers of demigods have been described as less intelligent persons. And here, the impersonalities are similarly described. Lord Krishna, in his personal form, is here speaking before Arjuna. And still, due to ignorance, impersonalists argue that the Supreme Lord ultimately has no form. Yamun Acharya, a great devotee of the Lord in the disciplic succession of Ramanucharya, has mm. written a very appropriate verse in this connection. My dear Lord, devotees like Vyasadeva and Narada know you to be the personality of Godhead. By understanding different Vedic literatures, one can come to know your characteristics, your form and your activities. And one can thus understand that you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But those who are in the modes of passion and ignorance, the demons, the non-devotees cannot understand you. They are unable to understand you However, experts such non-devotees may be discussing Vedanta and the Upanishad and other Vedic literatures. It is not impossible for them to understand the personality of Godhead. Stotra Ratna 12. In the Brahma Samhita, it is stated that the personality of Godhead cannot be understood simply by study of the Vedanta literature. Only by the mercy of the Supreme Lord can the personality of the Supreme be known. Therefore, in this verse, it is clearly stated that not only are the worshippers of the demigods less intelligent, but those non-devotees who are engaged in Vedanta and speculation on Vedic literature without any tinge of true Krishna consciousness are also less intelligent. And for them, it is not possible to understand God's personal nature. Persons who are under the impression that the absolute truth is impersonal are described as a buddhya, which means those who do not know the ultimate feature of the absolute truth. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is stated that supreme realization begins from the impersonal Brahman and then rises to the localized super soul. But the ultimate word, word in the absolute truth is the personality of Godhead. Modern impersonalities are still less intelligent. For they do not even follow their great predecessors, Shankaracharya, who has specifically stated that Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. Impersonalities, therefore, not knowing the supreme truth, think, Krishna to be only the son of Devaki and Vasudeva or a prince or a powerful living entity. This is also condemned in the Bhagavad Gita. 9.11 Only the fool regard me as an ordinary person. The fact is that no one can understand Krishna without rendering devotional service and without developing Krishna consciousness. 
the Bhagavatam confirms this. My Lord, if one is favored by even a slight trace of the mercy of your lotus feet, he can understand the greatness of your personality. But those who, are, who speculate to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead are unable to know you. Even though they continue to study the Vedas for many years, one cannot understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna or his form, quality or name simply by mental speculation or by discussing Vedic literature. One must understand him by devotional service. When one is fully engaged in Krishna consciousness, beginning by chanting the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare, then only one can one understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Non-devotee impersonalists think that Krishna has a body made of this material nature and that all his activities, his forms, and everything are Maya. These impersonalities are known as Mayavadis. They do not know the ultimate truth. The 20th verse clearly states, those who are blinded by lusty desires surrender unto the different demigods. It is accepted that besides the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there are demigods who have their different planets and the Lord also has a planet. As stated in the 23rd verse, the worshippers of the demigods go to different planets of the demigods and those who are devotees of Lord Krishna go to the Krishna Loka planet. Although this is clearly stated, the foolish impersonalities still maintain that the Lord is formless and that these forms are impositions. From the study of the Gita, does it appear that the demigods and their abodes are impersonal clearly neither the demigods nor krishna the supreme personality of godhead are impersonal they are all persons lord krishna is the supreme personality of godhead and he has his own planet and the demigods have theirs therefore the monistic contention that the ultimate truth is formless and that the form is imposed does not hold true it is clearly stated here that it is not imposed. From the Bhagavad Gita, we can clearly understand that the forms of demigods and the form of the Supreme Lord are simultaneously existing and that the Lord Krishna is Saksit Ananda, eternal blissful knowledge. The Vedas also confirm that the Supreme Absolute Truth is Ananda Mayo Bhayasat or by nature full of blissful pleasure and that is the reservoir of unlimited auspicious qualities and in the Gita the Lord says that although he is aja, unborn, he still appears. These are the facts that we should understand from the Bhagavad Gita. We cannot understand how the Supreme Personality of Godhead can be impersonal. The imposition theory of the impersonalist monist is false as far as the statements of the Gita are concerned. It is clear herein that the Supreme Absolute Truth, Lord Krishna, has both form and personality. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So if you see over here, Avyaktim Vyaktim Apannam saying that See, when you say avyaktam, no, it is unmanifested form or a non-manifested form, which over your translation is. And vyaktim apannam. So, he will become manifest. So, those who think that Krishna, you know, was unmanifest earlier and has become manifest now, avyaktam vyaktim apannam. And manyate, uh, manyate maam. A buddhaya. So those who think like this, they are a buddhaya, you know, less intelligent person. Because uh, why they are less intelligent people? Because param bhavam agyanatam. They do not know the supreme uh, nature and uh, they do not know the supreme nature of the supreme lord. But then, uh, why, uh, what is that supreme nature of the supreme lord? 
then he is saying that mama avyayam anuttamam he is saying that i am imperishable i am anuttamam i am the finest yeah you know uttam means uh, tama means actually darkness and uttama means the one who is beyond darkness right and uh, see uttam is also you know you know uh, uttama is also like a superlative degree you know good better best when you say uh, so superlative glorification like best so that is why i saying that avyaktam vyaktim apannam so uh, what was that unmanifest before has become manifest and uh, this is not referring to his you know in impersonal conception of you know this brahmavad but also that uh, impersonal conception in terms of mayavadis also so see what is the difference between a uh, brahmavadi and a mayavadi uh, brahmavadis are attracted to the impersonal conception and they either do not know about the personal conception and they are not even attracted by the personal conception because they have not associated only with devotees who have a personal conception so these are the brahmavadis and they are so they are not offensive but the mayavadis krishna aparadi they are in mayavadi bhashya shunile hoye sarvanath mayavadis are those Uh, who are not attracted to the impersonal conception, but they also consider this uh, personal conception to be, you know, uh, temporary, and uh, they think it. They they think the personal conception of the supreme law to be temporary and, uh, you know, a convenient fiction. You know, kalpanik lagta hai unko. So. you know convenient fiction means what actually that uh, this is just a tool by which you know one can move from a lower uh, level of reality to a higher level of reality and because uh, we are conditioned to think of a form so uh, we cannot think of a form less and therefore uh, just think uh, you know Uh, we cannot think about something very formless so we need a form to meditate you know i at least i personally need a form to meditate on a form right and afterwards then uh, they say that you can transcend that form and that is their conception but krishna is saying that those who think like that right uh, uh, that Uh, you can meditate on a form, and then you transcend that form. मतलब क्या you reject it, and then you go on to the next step. So uh, Krishna is saying that those who think like that, they they are less intelligent people. They are a budhaya. And uh, when Krishna is saying a budhaya, he is very strongly saying this because Maya Vadis are offending his form. say for example you take you know you you take your own self and a particular friend of yours comes and says that okay so and so person does not exist but are he is existing he is talking walking he has a wife he has a family he has children everything he has and how do you say that you know this person does not have a form and he does not exist only so mayavadi you know offend this particular you know form of the lord and uh, uh, avyaktam vyaktim apannam which means that the thing that the actual eternal reality is impersonal brahman and that brahman is uh, you know manifested as bhagwan so there are many many you know you can say in the market there are many many brands of mayavadis so that is why we use the word mayavad you know as a Uh, a rubber band which is you know ex expandable practically anybody and everybody who has you know some conception about this impersonal brahman we will call them as maya vadis only and uh, uh, because uh, now that it is not very necessarily wrong but uh, 
it, it is not even accurate description of the supreme lord so that is why brahmavadi and mayavadi and those who are offensive are uh, you know mayavadi and uh, you know there is their idea uh, for example that the brahman is the only reality uh, brahman alone is transcendental we know that there is a you know uh, tattva uh, there is one jagat also there is jeev also there is jagdish also but jagdish is the supreme lord when we say you know om jay jagdish hare so we know that there is a supreme lord who is also jagat ish jagat ke bhi ish hai he is the controller ish means controller ish means also you know the husband or ish means also the maintainer right so uh, he is the supreme lord and the jiva is you know very small minute living entity and the jagat is this material world when we say and that's why uh, you know in the upanishad also well then a jeev jagat or jagdish you know that focus should be there on that only and that is why uh, people don't generally talk only about that uh, what is the connection between the jiva jagat and jagdish che jays ke bare mein people don't talk what is the jiva's connection with Jag jagdish what is the jagat's con uh, connection with jagdish what is the jiva's connection with jagat or what is the jagat's connection with jiva people really don't talk about that okay so uh, if you see uh, you know why why am i saying all this is that then one has to understand the categories one has to understand the supreme lord and the reality and his energies and uh, uh, you know what is krishna talking about over here is that uh, in all these three worlds bhumi ap bhumi rapir uh, nalo vayu uh, you know but the mayavadi's idea is that that brahman alone is the ultimate reality and that brahman alone is transcendental and we have you know different modes uh, namely you know the transcendence and goodness passion ignorance so the, 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 their idea is that when brahman comes in contact with goodness then uh, you know that what comes in contact with goodness is actually jagdish or bhagwan so uh, uh, for them, Bhagwan is, you know, uh, Brahman is actually contaminated by coming in contact with matter. Because even in the mode of goodness, mode of goodness is also not pure. Right? And when Brahman is com coming in contact with goodness, then, you know, that is called Bhagwan. And when ba Brahman is coming in contact with passion, then uh, that will lead uh, the jivas. And when Brahman is coming in contact with the mode of ignorance or tamas uh, that will lead to the formation of matter. So, you know, their philosophy is so much weak that that jad tattva, that is jagat, their conception is uh, conception that ultimately Bhagwan is also material. Everything is Brahman, but when Brahman is covered by different kinds of all these modes of material nature and illusions, Brahma is covered by sattvic illusion. This is what they say actually. So, uh, you know, uh, the Mayavadis, that is why they are called big, big Krishna Apradis. And uh, that is why Krishna has condemned them in. Uh, and uh, uh, even the five rasas that we have, they they actually take those five rasas also into a very different level only. So let's not discuss uh, that and confuse ourselves more. We'll go to the next where Krishna says that uh, he reserves the right to not reveal himself to the Brahmavadis and the Mayavadis. These two these are the two people where Krishna does not reveal himself to them at all. What he says that. Naham Prakasha Sarvasya Yoga Maya Samavrita 
मूढ़ो अयम ना भी जानाती लोको माम अजम अव्ययम तो समझ दीजिए ट्रांसलेशन एंड पोपट बोथ हरे कृष्ण माता जी कहना है यस यस ट्रांसलेशन एंड प्रोपोर्ट वाइज डिवाइन वे से इसी भक्ति विधान स्वामी श्री प्रपात यश प्रपात आई एम नेवर मैनिफेस्ट टू द फुलिश एंड अनइंटेलिजेंट फॉर देम आई एम कवर्ड बाय माय इंटरनल पोटेंसी एंड देयरफॉर दे डू नॉट नो दैट आई एम अनबोर्न एंड इनफॉलेबल प्रपोर्ट जयश प्रपोर्ट इट मे बी argued that since krishna was visible to everyone when he was present on this earth how can it be said that he is not manifest to everyone but actually he was not manifest to everyone when krishna was present there were only a few people who could understand him to be the supreme personality of godhead in the assembly of kurus when sishupal spoke against krishna's being elected president of the assembly bhishma supported him and proclaimed him to be the supreme god similarly the pandavas and a few other knew that he was a supreme but not everyone he was not revealed to the non devotees and the common man therefore in bhagavad gita krishna says that but for his pure devotee all men consider him to be like themselves he was manifest only to his devotees as the reservoir of all pleasure but to others to unintelligent non devotees he was covered by his internal potency in the prayers of kunti in the shrimad bhagavat in the shrimad bhagavatam 1.8 8.19 it is said that the lord is covered by the certain of yoga maya and thus ordinary people cannot understand him the yoga maya certain is also confirmed in the shopnishad mantra 15 in which the devotee prays oh my lord you are the maintainer of the entire universe the devotional service to you is the highest religious principle therefore i pray that you will also maintain me your transcendental form is covered by the yoga maya the brahma uh, brahma jyotir is the covering of internal potency may you kindly remove the glowing effulgence that impedes my seeing you your sachidanand vigraha your eternal form of bliss and knowledge the supreme personality of godhead in his transcendental form of bliss and knowledge is covered by the internal potency of brahma jyotir and the less intelligent impersonalist cannot see the supreme on this account also in shrimad bhagavatam 10.14.7 there is the prayer by brahma o supreme personality of godhead o super soul o master of all mystery who can calculate your potency and past times in this world you are always expanding your internal potency and therefore no one can understand you learned scientists and learned scholars can examine the atomic constitution of the material world or even the planet but still they are unable to calculate your energy and potency although you are present before them the supreme personality of godhead lord krishna is not only unborn but also avyaya inexhaustible his eternal form is bliss and knowledge and his energies are all inexhaustible hari krishna shambhavi thank you very much so he saying naham prakasha sarvasya so prakasha means you know i am not manifest you know uh, to everyone yoga maya samavrut i am covered by samavrut means covered i am covered by the uh yoga maya potency and uh, he say that mood ayam na bhi janati muda means you know fool propat says fools and rascals sometimes and they do not know me why they do not know me because loko mam ajam avyayam they do not know that i am unborn and i am 
uh, ajam, uh, avyayam. I'm inexhaustible. So if you see in this verse, Krishna is saying, uh, Krishna is talking to Arjuna uh, about aham twice. Anna. He's saying that uh, he, he's, he, he's uh, uh, so he's not talking about some you know reality higher than him. He's saying aham very clearly, you know, uh, twice. So he's saying that I am not manifest for everyone. So who is the I? That I is actually referred to as Krishna. Krishna is a person is actually standing in front of Arjuna and he is saying that I am not manifest to everyone. And then he is saying that uh, 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 why and to whom is he not manifest to? He is not manifest to the foolish unintelligent people. And this is what he is saying over here. Right. Okay. And then he's saying that Lokam Mam Ajam Avyayam. That is what he's saying that um, uh, Krishna uh, is standing in front of Arjuna. He's saying that I'm not manifest to anyone. Naham Prakasha Sarvasyam. So why is he not manifest to everyone? Because Krishna reserves the right to reveal himself or uh, conceal himself depending on his own sweet free will. Because uh, see, in our in 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 the society, you no, know, everyone wants to know, you know, their rights. Right? Different people want to know their rights. Women want to know their rights. The lower class they want to know their rights. And the Africans want to know their rights, and the Americans want to know their rights. So different people, you know, they want to know their rights. And among these people, uh, different people who have their rights, then what about the right of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God? So that is why the right of the Supreme Lord is to decide whether he will reveal himself or not reveal himself. Even in this world, you know, if you see the more powerful a person is, or the more influential uh, a person is, the person can choose. Sometimes he wants to, you know, uh, uh, you know, if he wants to reveal himself or not. So sometimes people say that if God exists, let him come in front of me. But uh, no, uh, we cannot give orders to the Supreme Lord. And Krishna is not our order carrier, right? Uh, we cannot demand that, okay, if the Prime Minister exists, let him come here in front of me. No, we can't demand like that. You know, uh, if a child who has born uh, in a tribal forest and has never heard about the Prime Minister and someone, uh, you know, tells him that, uh, you know, your small village is a very small part of a very huge country and this entire country is actually controlled by some Prime Minister of India and uh, uh, someone will uh, someone uh, tells him that uh, uh, that uh, you know uh, the, the that prime minister you have never seen so he will say that see I have not seen this prime minister any time why should I believe that the prime minister exists Anna uh, so if he is there let him come in front of me all right so. Um, uh, if he does not come, then, uh, you know, sometimes in LOK, let him come at the count of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like, no? So, if and if the Prime Minister does not come in, you know, those 10 counts, then he says that, hey, the Prime Minister does not exist only. So, then what happens is that we have to tell him that count is a substance, uh, you know, uh, of, of, uh, of that particular... Uh, tissue in the head and uh, will the prime minister come at the count of 10 so we have to educate the little child so actually he has to understand that position of the prime minister that see the prime minister is also having a right uh, 
if someone goes and meets a prime minister, the prime minister has his own choice that whether he wants to meet that person or does not want to meet that person. Like, you know, recently also, if you see, no, our prime minister gave the creator's award to many, many people. Thousands were there online, those who, you know, give who have contributed something valuable to our society in India or with the people all around the world. And they were chosen. So these creators, people, they were thinking that, oh, maybe, you know, the prime minister will just, you know, yeah. online only give an award or just like, but no, the prime minister being so busy and being a very, uh, you know, super, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, busy with different, different activities. Like before the creator's award, he had gone to some part of the country and uh, he had, uh, you know, uh, visited those places because of the elections and all and still uh, it, still uh, it was said that 10.30 the award function was supposed to start and he was dot 10.30 in that Bharat Mandapam also and he wanted to personally interact with all those all those uh, creators and wanted to give them uh, his inputs also know their views also. So now this is the prime minister's, you know, desire that no, I want to meet, I want to acknowledge their uh, their contribution towards the uh, a successful society like India, right? So similarly, you know, if if you know ordinary people have their rights, uh, you know, uh, if powerful people have their rights, then uh, what about Krishna? Krishna is the supremely ordinary, supremely powerful, you know, he has a right. And uh, Krishna says that uh, uh, I do not become manifest to everyone. And why does not Krishna become manifest to everyone? Why he lets himself to be, uh, you know, covered by his uh, uh, internal potency or yoga maya potency? Because he reciprocates to our desires. Uh, uh, no, I wanted to see him. So, he should come before us. No. When we say he reciprocates, it is not based on our spoken desire. But according to our overall mentality that is there. So, even if I am demanding, I wanted, I wanted to see Krishna let him come in front of me. But if you see, the attitude is one of a defense. You know, let him come in front of me. You're not like that. And not of dependence on Krishna. Then we cannot access Krishna. Because ultimately, I am a very small part. I am just Anu. Krishna is Vibhu. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's a mighty person. So, we can access Krishna when we turn towards him with devotion. And, you know, uh, uh, Prabhupada, you know, in many places in the Bhagavatam also is written that uh, uh, a person on earth cannot demand the sun to rise. You cannot say, hey, now rise at 9 o'clock at night. I command you. I... So, but uh, the sun will rise according to his uh, to its own accord, you know. Uh, and when the sun will rise, it will become manifest to the people. So Krishna, uh, it is described that he also has his own will. He also chooses when to manifest and when not to manifest. So. If in our heart there is a desire to defy Krishna, then we may think that I am God. I am supreme. Or even if I am not the supreme, certainly Krishna is not the supreme. Yeah. Uh, maybe there is, you know, uh, no one supreme only. Uh, maybe, you know, uh, the nature is supreme. Your Prakriti is supreme. Hai. You know, that impersonal light is supreme. So, my own conception is supreme. Meri jo dharana hai, param hai. Right, you know. 
and whatever, but certainly Krishna is not the supreme. So this kind of attitude will not take us far away. This kind of attitude will keep us trapped in this material existence only. And in order to come out of this material existence, we need to give up of this attitude. When uh, when Krishna see so when Krishna will see that we want to become you know uh, what is it as a word surrogate gods <laughs> we want to substitute God we want to uh, you know play the part of God and and it doesn't reveal his potent uh, in this world uh, except as death so it is called uh, uh, you know. Um, anantak who does not one who does antaha you know that time will devour everything Krishna will manifest as death and at that time everything will be finished but that is not Krishna's cruelty that is Krishna's arrangement by which that person can continue to play that uh, you know game he wants to uh, or he will wake up and he will realign himself with that reality. So, uh, if you see death, death uh, acts as, as a reminder. As an educator, if we are going to take that education, if we don't want, then we can continue our, you know, uh, misadventures life after life but Krishna has his right uh, to reserve himself and not reveal himself and we cannot ask Krishna to come before us uh, uh, with an attitude you know uh, uh, the, or before us as an attitude of defies uh, our attitude for because the sun cannot, uh, you know, come on my, you know, commanding or demanding. He will come out on his own accord. And when the sun comes, we are benefited. Right? Whenever Krishna comes on this earth planet, everybody is benefited. When the sun comes, everybody is benefited. Why? Because the sun comes by his warmth also and the sun comes by light also. And Krishna, when he comes, he will come on his own will. And when Krishna comes, he is ready to also manifest at that moment. But uh, it is not just our you know, desire. The underlining principle is what is my attitude towards Krishna. And Krishna is seeing my attitude. And if my attitude is not of a dependence attitude or dependence means a service attitude, you can say. You know, or of, you know, uh, compliance, then Krishna will not manifest. So, we will show Krishna what we wanted to see him. Uh, but by the dependence and compliance. Compliance means, you know, we start recognizing uh, that I am subordinate to Krishna. We recognize a position that I am subordinate to Krishna and then we start serving him. And uh, if you if you see, uh, uh, that is why uh, uh, he is saying that uh, uh, service attitude is so very important. Sevan mukhe hi jivhado. Swayam eva uh, spuratadi. So when I am saying Sevan Mukhe Hi Jivadu, the very first service that I do to Krishna is actually uh, I start serving him from this Jivha. Sevan Mukhe Hi Jivadu. Start serving Krishna sincerely. And uh, Un Mukhe. Un Mukhe means what? Uh, become Un Mukh towards Krishna. Turn your face towards Krishna with an attitude of devotion. Jivado, you know, and it starts with what? It starts 
with chanting the holy names of the Lord, uh, chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, having prasadam, which is actually offered to Krishna. And then what happens is, when you start doing this, then swayam eva, eva spurathi adaha. So he, he himself becomes manifested by his own free will and by understanding that I am tiny and uh, I am in uh, I am finite. Krishna is infinite, and Krishna wants us or uh, uh, wants us to choose to either love him or to defy him and uh, try to be independent of him. So those who want to remain independent of him, Krishna chooses not to reveal his glories to them. So even if they claim to be turning towards Krishna, towards spiritual inquiry, towards bhakti, I want to know about God and you know, is God a person? No, he is not. He is an impersonal light, you know. So people may have so much about uh, God, but often they are, you know, uh, they are doing is, you know, they are uh, they're imposing their opinion about God. So when they're doing that, they're basically in the name of knowing about God, they're trying to play God. Maybe Bhagavan, you know, oh, in, in book distribution time, you very much, I've seen, you know, so then uh, we politely, you know, you know, give him the pages of the Bhagavad Gita and we try to show him that how we are, you know, uh, finite and Krishna is infinite in that way. And Krishna says that these people are mudo. Mudo yam nabi janati. They cannot know me. And what they cannot know? Loko maam ajam abhyayam. They do not know that I am unborn. I am inexhaustible. And Krishna is saying that I am beyond time. Uh, you know, I come at a particular time and, uh, you know, uh, uh, at a particular time I come, I do some activities and I go and I do not have a beginning. I do not have an end. And that's how, you know, uh, these things keep on continuing. So, uh, he's saying that avyaktam, uh, uh, you know, I was unmanifest before. I became manifest and now those who think like that, they are muda people. They are uh, they are a budaya. They, they, they do not know what is happening, you know. They do not uh, know that I am aja as such. So Krishna is actually, you know, telling here that uh, uh, which is very interesting. He's saying that yoga maya samavrita. He's saying that uh, here is the covering. Krishna is talking about feel, foolish people uh, that are mudha. Okay. And this mudha is covered by what? This mudha is covered by yoga maya. Mudha is not covered by, you know, yoga maya. So, uh, maha maya and yoga maya. We know there are two categories. Maha maya is the energy which is uh, allowing people to separate from God by giving them, you know, false conceptions that, you know, I'm the body and I'm male, I'm female and, you know, I'm separate from God and I can enjoy by, you know, enjoying with my senses and gratifying my, gratifying my senses and, you know, all these conceptions because of Mahamaya. But Yoga Maya, you know, is, uh, you know, which is, uh, Yoga means actually connection, uh, connection with Krishna and Maya means disconnection from Krishna. So, uh, how can we have a connection and a disconnection with Krishna that, uh, there is an idea that, you know, Krishna is God and there is a, a reconnection of yoga and connection with that, that, that yoga maya, you know, role is to take the devotees near to Krishna. This is yoga maya's role. Maha maya takes, you know, devotees, sorry, the living entities away from Krishna. So, uh, that is why, you know, if you see in the spiritual world also, you have yoga maya, Right? That uh, Yashoda Mai is also thinking, oh, he's my small little child, he's my uh, cutie pie, and uh, uh, he's, uh, uh, you know, uh, he's dependent on me, and I need to, you know, take care of him and all. So, 
योग माया इज ब्रिंगिंग अबाउट दैट इल्यूजन विच इज इंक्रीजिंग द डिवोशन एंड ही इज इंक्रीजिंग द डिवोशन ऑफ द डिवोटीज एंड दैट इज वाई ही सेंग दैट इंटरनल पोटेंसी ऑफ द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड इज कवर्ड just like the sun is covered by clouds and we are not able to see you know the sun but actually that doesn't mean that the sun does not exist my vision is covered you know with the clouds and that is why i am not able to personally see the supreme lord so the lord is not covered by maya but my vision of the lord is covered by maya and the, and the lord's knowledge is never covered and because why the lord's knowledge is not covered because he knows the past present and future hai na uh of everyone and of everything he knows and that is why if you see now from the next section onwards we will see that how um uh you can come out from the delusion of maya to the devotion to krishna and krishna will give us that uh, you know uh the that the, that uh, uh, that thing that where how to become uh, determined in bhakti how to uh how to be determined in bhakti and how uh, a person who is determined in bhakti can please the supreme lord very easily so anybody has any questions doubts queries i'm ready to solve them actually i should have finished this chapter today itself but uh, i could not finish i'm sorry i came with an idea to complete this chapter today but I was not able to complete <laughs> the lots to say in every shloka and you know explain to the proper purport in a more better way okay so if somebody does not have any queries doubts or... yes prabhu mata ji you said modas and foolish people they are covered by yoga maya Hmm. But they are actually uh, supposed to be covered by Mahamaya, right? Because they are yes, yes, they are, uh, Mahamaya. Yes, 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 Mahamaya. Yes, Prabhu, Mahamaya. Right. Because even in the Yoga Maya, also, na Krishna again reserves the right to not reveal himself uh, to the common man, and even among the devotees, also he reserves the right that. whether he wants to reveal himself or not and unless we have completely impressed krishna by our exclusive devotional service then he will definitely you know reveal himself to us in that way shila prabhupad ki jai gaur bhakt vrind ki jai hari krishna hari bol